We're going live. Oh, we're going live. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, welcome back. <laughs> so, welcome back to uh, Meet the Jugglers Live. And this is already the 13th episode. And today, we're very happy to have Sylvain. Ooh la la. And uh, Sylvain is. Um, yeah, I met Sylvain at some uh, juggling conventions. And then he, um, he came to one of my workshops once upon a time and stayed with us and uh he has a cool way of, of teaching people very down to earth and at the same time very inspiring very creative and um did i already say that you love you street you're a great street performer um, but uh sylvan you know he's one of these people that pushes his limits you know he like he, he's into challenges you know he's like uh he, he, he recently rode around estonia on his on his unicycle <laughs> oh, and, you know, just looking for creative outlets and um and you know it's like uh it's difficult eh? you know like, it's like this whole situation has gone on for like a year and it's difficult to constantly find creative ways of um of expressing ourselves and and, and making a, a positive impact in the world but uh sylvan is definitely someone who's, who's been going for it so um sylvan great to have you on the show this evening yeah, I'm mean, super cool to uh, to have a conversation. Thanks for inviting me. I'm always happy to uh, share all the, the cool things of juggling. It's always a good thing to do, cheering you up, giving a good mood. Yeah. As you yeah, say, so quite important, uh, I don't know, yeah, important uh, things as well to, in this time, to, you know, having like a juggling is a good way to keep a feeling of progress, can pressing it, practicing it at home, even in a very tiny space, as uh, you could see behind me, very small flat. But can still check it. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So um, let's just go uh, go into your story. I always like to ask, start off with people's stories. Like, uh, I mean, basically, because there was one moment where we didn't know how to juggle, and then we learned how to juggle. You know, how was this for you? And what? Uh... Like, how did I meet juggling and uh, get to where I am right now, more or less? <laughs> Uh, so basically, I don't know, I juggled for the first time when I was something like eight years old and we were in like a holiday camps with the parents and basically like, you know, there was some activities during the day. So the parents just get rid of the kids and, uh, and uh, during the day, so we do some circus and that's where I start juggling for the first time. I was doing Diablo, uh, really enjoyed it and I kind of keep having it like, yeah, all my school time on the background. It was like a good hobby. I was really investing my free time in it. Um, and so, yeah, I was kind of always wondering, like, okay, that's the cool thing. Does I want to get more professional to it or does I just keep it as a hobby? Uh, until the point when I get to some engineering uh, school and to high university. And at some point, I just get to a moment where I'm like, no, engineering is not my way. And uh, so I basically moved to Estonia, and since that, like that six years now, I'm living in Estonia, and I became a street performer, make my living out of uh, doing my juggling in the streets and uh, hunting, uh, like asking for donation at the end of the show. So no, it's like six years, like juggling is my work, and it's very interesting to see like my different uh, the evolution from when I was more as a hobby, just juggling for the trick, while right now I'm working as a performer, so I'm. I'm still having a bit of the juggling for the trick for my own training, but I'm also having a lot of juggling for the performance. Hmm. Yeah. So, um, okay. Let's just take this tangent straight away because it's like, I think you're one of the first, um, you are one of the first street performers, uh, to be on the show, actually, you know, someone who regularly just goes in the street and like busts it. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, yeah. I've done hundreds of street perform performance performances yeah. myself. Yeah, 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 hundreds, and um, not for years, not for years, I haven't. And um, you know, when, once I got in the swing of things, I really enjoyed it. But it's something really hardcore, you know. I, I think it's like, it's not something that it's something you really have to like get to doing, you know. I mean, I was pretty shy, and uh, and it helped me, you know. And I was like right in the deep end immediately, <laughs> you know, and. Um, I find it very, very, um, one of the first things I find um, very useful is not to go on the street as yourself, you know, like to find some sort of character that's a slightly bigger version of, you, you know, a slightly bit more excited. And uh, and um, we're going to go into this a little bit, um, but it's like a whole other world. You know, you become a street performer 
rather than just the juggler you know it's like there's so many things to think about you know you have to be you have to start off doing something that's interesting enough to not do too much so that people want to see what's going on and then you have to deliver like some really cool stuff and then you have to build the energy up and then boom to explode with your hat and um yeah that was a bit of a synthesis to the thing but uh i would i'm very interested to hear hear your uh how, how was your the first time you went on the street? Let's start on this, and then, and then. What uh, the first then? time I went on the street was actually in Estonia some six years ago, and uh, I've just been juggling fire torches randomly in the street. I didn't have a show back at the time, and uh, it was amazing. I remember like the, this feeling of just like I don't know. I, I find there is something so overcoming and so satisfying and such a rush of adrenaline for me of going in the street which i do not have at all with performing on stage hmm. um i find that street has something very raw very ruthless absolutely ruthless but i love this and it's like uh like if someone don't like what you do that's just gonna go away. It's like it's, it's, there is no mercy. There is no like, oh, I've paid for my tickets. Like you know, let's give him a chance. It's like no, ah, you're boring. Ciao, I'm going away. And uh, and I love this. That it's like there is also a, an, an an extreme spontaneity in a street. That you know, it's like no one is coming to see you, and therefore everyone who is here, every second that they are here, they are here because you make them decided to go to be here. You convince them that what they were currently doing, uh, like that what you was offering was more exciting than what they were currently doing. And I find there is something so satisfying and uh, uh, like, yeah, so joyful. And uh, I'm like, yeah, I'll just, I'll just give me kind of powerful maybe as well in it, which I really love with street. Yeah, sure, 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 no, absolutely. And um, so, um, yeah, let's talk about some, uh, let's say somebody watching this now or later on, someone's done some street shows or, or they're thinking about perhaps, perhaps like in, in the near future to try it out or um, what sort of advice could we give to the, to the people? Like what are, what are the things that you've like learned the hard way? And, and, you know, some things you have to go through it and do it. You have to do the process. You know what I mean? There's like no tricks about it. You just have to put yourselves out there. But um, yeah, I'll stop now. Otherwise I'll talk about some tens of millions of other things. <laughs> but that's a... Oh, it's, it's like an advice is just go for it. Give no excuse. Go for it every day. And there is like seek for advice like nowadays i think you can way more find like community on facebook uh, of street performers where you can request for help and advice but in the meantime no no excuse just go for oh, it go in okay, the street, okay. let, let, me rephrase, let me rephrase this again like um um what have you learned now that um if you applied what you did now earlier on you would you would have um like you, you would have you would have had more success earlier on you know you'd have felt better about it as well felt more comfortable i mean did you did you um i'm going to try i'm going to probably put words in your mouth now eh? but you tell me about it it's like um how do you make the this transition from juggling to street performing right like how to make what you're doing is so exciting that people stop you know Mm, there is no secret you just have to do it it's just, it's just like I, I can't really say like oh there is a great knowledge that uh, if someone would have told me at the beginning no 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 what you do what you do tell us what you do how like do you what stop? i do in the street right now how do you stop a crowd i do nothing this is the best way to stop a crowd <laughs> <laughs> you just pretend you do something and do nothing like, like literally like, okay, right now, like uh, to stop, a it's just, it's all in attitude. That's why it's like, that's why okay. I say there is no easy way to learn it. It's very, okay. I can say you a, a small anecdote. I remember at my early begin as a street performer, I was really looking at it in a way that every single person I was seeing passing by in my head, I was like, oh, I need to do something to make them stop. I need to do something to make them feel entertained. I me, I need to do something to make them come part of the show. And, uh, and, and I remember that at one point, it kind of like switched for me. And I got to the idea of like, everyone who come and don't stop 
it's their loss because I'm gonna do a massive show. I'm gonna do a super great show. People are gonna love it. People are gonna clap. They're gonna cheer. They're gonna have a, such an amazing time that the people who come by and don't stop to watch my show, I'm sorry for them. And there is something crazy that when you are with this mindset, everyone stops. <laughs> And yeah, I don't. I can't say what I'm changing physically, but for me, it's really about the mindset. But yeah, yeah. No, no. This is why. This is. These are the hidden treasures that I'm trying to dig out for, for other people. You but know? if you go like to come back to juggling, which is more the idea of this, is like it's the same with juggling. Like I can say, okay, an example. Like if you go with the idea of like, oh, I'm training a trick, or if you go with the idea, I'm gonna nail this trick right now today, you get it. Yeah, like yeah. I can give the example. I know that my seven ball, for example, I was practicing this for a year already, never managed to make a flash. And I remember that one day I saw a video of one friend that I've spent time with him at EGC who was flashing his seven ball uh, on Facebook. And I was like, what the hell? This guy was way far away to get his seven balls than me last time we met. How the hell can this guy get his seven ball while I'm training for it and not? Next mm -hmm. day, I went to the gym and I was like, I'm not going to leave this room until I make my flash. I did it in a day. <laughs> and yeah, it's so yeah. much in your mind. Yeah, and this is actually is, uh, we talked a little bit about this with Delani. This is committing. You know, it, this is literally what commitment means. You know, it, like for some people, commitment is a bit of a like, oh, a commitment is a, it's like deciding to do it. You know, I'm going to do this thing. You know, it's not like um, it's just deciding. Basically, um, no excuses. Just, just ha it's just there, ready for you. You know, so um, you know we live in a whole world and a whole society that essentially sends us signals of lack that we're not good enough, that we haven't got enough, that we're not ready. And um, you know, it's like middle of February, and uh, the almond tree, tree outside the house is getting ready to flower now. You know, it's like. He's not worried that like it's not the right time. It's like uh, it's too cold. He's just going for it, you know. And it's the whole of nature just just wants to explode um, and, and and just be abundant, you know. So it's definitely about an abundant mindset. And this guy I travelled around. The first person I travelled around with, um, who was like a natural street street performer in the end, um, uh, Peter Schwando, Peter Willy Willy Wonder. You know, he, he just had a natural talent for being on the street. You know, he you could see like in his mind, there was already like a huge crowd there, you know, and then the, the huge crowd would come. You know, it's like just this field, massive field, you know, and uh, and um, just this conviction, you know, that the, 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 the people are there. And um, and also, the um, you know, there are some traps that we get caught up in, you know, and I would like to sort of try and get a little bit more into this in, in a street show, you know, and it's because essentially it's about raising the energy of the audience. Essentially, you know, it's like you have a circle, you get people in there, you know, if they're standing a far away, you get them to come further. So they're in the in the in the in the in the energy of the thing. And then they they have a great time. You know, they have to be there and commit as well and uh, realize it's a yeah, live show. Yeah, that's it. Like, uh, it's, it's about like, Getting people in the moment. For me, this is what I love about street shows. This is why it's my favorite form of art and performing. Because it's just like there is nothing more genuine and in the moment at street show. I really feel. Because as I say, if people drop the moment, if they're not attentive, they're gonna get on their smartphones. They're gonna forget about the shows. They're just gonna walk away. Yeah, right. Even nowadays, probably people are even more distracted. Eh? <laughs> I don't know. I've not performed for ages, but like, you know, it's like I can imagine people all taking videos and. Uh... <laughs> yeah, 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 I got a lot of them, obviously. <laughs> yeah, so um, there are there are a few people watching this live. Um, if you like people watching it live or people watching later as well, if you have a comment or like if you street perform yourselves as well, if you're interested, then just drop a hello and. Uh, you know, it's always quite encouraging to, to know that people are uh, are interested in, in what we're talking about here. And, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, if there is some people watching street performance, like definitely, like uh, they can drop a comment, they can uh, ask me uh, on my Facebook page or YouTube, and uh, I'm very happy to give some advice. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 
Um, let's take this now onto your. Um, let's go now onto your. Um, yeah, no, I want to say this point here as well. You know, it's like um, as jugglers, we always want to perform what we've been working on. You know, and this doesn't quite work in a street show. You know, we have to craft it a little bit more and um, make some impressive acts. And uh, how do you balance this? You know, like so you don't so you, so you actually do something that you love to do, and um, and um, now oh, there's Ezzy writing question. I'll ask it in a second. How do you balance what you love to do? um with what you want to offer for the audience you know because sometimes we fall in the audience trap you know we think the audience wants uh the the unicycle war with fire torches at the end you know um i don't know like my first things that come uh, not sure, i'm not sure if it really answer your question but it's also like about like yeah in street performance it's not about the trick uh i can show some very very hard trick doesn't have any effect. I can show some easy trick, but very impressive, which going on a tall unicycle with three fire torches is a very good example. It's a super easy trick. Like, I mean, this is, like if you're doing juggling and like you can learn it in a couple of months. Um, and that's the final trick of my show. Before this, I do some Diablo routine, which is pretty good, I think. No one even noticed it. So maybe that's the way I balance it. I do my tricks that I feel satisfied about it during my show, but I finish with the tricks that look impressive. But but juggling, like street performance is not about the tricks. So for me, there is really like two different things right now. There is my personal training where I enjoy this self growth of developing new tricks and be like, yeah, cool, I have achieved a new skill. And there is street performance, which the skill is not the juggling trick. The skill is like the the crowd manipulation kind of is like the, the engaging yeah. the crowd it's the interaction and for me that's two different skill really yeah yeah no absolutely absolutely but juggling has this power of wow as well you know like um people they they some people they're like wow <laughs> you know and this yeah, opens yeah. your body a little bit so anyway we have a question here from Ezzy, and he asks okay. um yeah how do you create your performance i mean a lot of street performance is trial and error, right? Trial and error. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, like, okay. So I went from, as I say, I went from the beginning. I was doing like fire torches, and uh, and then at some point, I kind of realized that just doing work by nah, it doesn't work. If you want to do a, if you want to make a living from street performance as a juggler, work by doesn't work. Like, you're never gonna make enough money to live. You need to have a street show because this is how you can start to really gather more audience and get a bigger, bigger donation and manage to live out of it. And uh, yeah, no secret, just go for it, try something. And if it doesn't work, don't try it, uh, don't do it again. If it works, make it better next time. Yeah. Uh, as I say, like- music? Do you use music in your in your shows? Like some street performers, they, they're they like the really raw ones, don't use any music whatsoever, you know? But- uh, music, help. Here, think, music, help it, helps right? music helps a lot. Music helps a lot. It's so like, Street performer would gather a massive crowd without an amplifier. That's a guy I'm like, so good. Um, uh, I can do this. Yeah, I have music, I have an amplifier, a microphone. But you don't need this when you start. You don't need this to see if it's a proof of concept. Like the first step for me is just go in the street, try something, and accept you're going to fail. Like I've honestly probably made an hundred of Oh, full street show before I managed to start getting a crowd. Like I've been going for like a month. Every day I was going to the city center of Tallinn and most of the day I was coming back with zero euro. Like didn't get there a crowd. No one stopped to watch. I just get back home and and that's it. Like, you know, you don't Bye. feel very amazing. Bye, under, your, under your covers. <laughs> yeah, but, as, but this, this is what I love about street. It's ruthless, but because the fail are obvious, then the victory are like, so catalyzed like the victory of a real value you know when you yeah. really get a good show you're like i got it because of me it's it's, it's just like it's me it's not like random yeah it's whatever not, you know magical yeah yeah and um there's a uh, sten says uh is am i your predecessor i don't quite know what that means but um um <laughs> I don't know. I can't see the no, comment. I'll, expl I'll explain to Stan. Um, 
we met a, a, a lot of times, uh, you and Sylvan, and I offer these containers where jugglers can be um, can be creative and they can work on their bodies and they can work on the more mindful and, um, and meditative side of things. So, um, so yeah, when stu when uh, uh, students, when uh, others jugglers come to these to, to these retreats, we create something really together. You know, I mean, there's all sorts of things that I've been thinking about, obviously. You know, and this is my way of street performing, if you like. You know, it's like the way of crafting a day to bring the energy up and down, and to create community and to create as much sharing as possible. And incredible things happen in, in these retreats. So, um, so yeah. <laughs> so um let's go on to your frenchy style juggling i don't know what you'd like to share with your frenchy style yeah juggling. i mean like it's very fun so like yeah i i, I like that we have very similar way of uh teaching juggling actually because me i'm getting more and more teaching like right now i'm like street performing and teaching and uh and my philosophy about i really try to to teach the philosophy i see through juggling rather than try to teach some trick because for me like what what i love in juggling it is that it's something which is uh, it's a physical activities, but it's not sportive. So even like the engineer, like uh, office worker, will never move his body. He can juggle. It's not like uh, it's not like you know doing some IIL when you need to clean up a tissue. If you don't have good physical condition, you can't do this. But juggling, even if you're not physically trained, you can juggle. So I really like that. It's it's a good way to give people back the taste to move with their body, kind of. And and what I like with juggling is the feeling of progress, of the feeling of development, of like looking at something that seems absolutely impossible for you. And then an hour, half an hour, 20 minutes, a day, a week, a month later on, being looking at this back and be like, wow, this is my comfort zone. I can't do it. And it's super easy for me now. And, and for mm -hmm. me, it's really, I feel like I see so many people that after they pick up juggling, either they keep doing it or not, they've been really telling me that they had a, a, a tremendous change in their life and in the perception they had on how they behave toward life. Because, because I really feel like juggling is making the impossible possible, even easy. And, and, and it's really, so, it's, it's a feeling, it's a philosophy that um, just spread around all the aspects of life. I really feel myself when I'm training regularly, then I'm also more daring to try new stuff in other aspects of like, you know, is it cooking something different or whatever. So this is really this idea I want to try, I want to give to my workshop. Uh, when I'm teaching like this Frenchy style, or I called it juggling for the dump. It's really, it's a juggling for workshop for non-juggler. So this is really what I like. It's like people who have never touched juggling and that's the kind of people that most of the time if you give them three balls, like, no, 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 I can't juggle. This is not my scene. And, oh, yeah. uh, and after two hours, you get them to not want to leave the training. And that's, I love this. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure, sure. So, um, yeah, show, show us some things, whatever you like. So, so we nothing to do with street juggling. Um, no. Hi, Ivan! <laughs> Ivan! Nothing to do with street juggling. This is like, this is juggling. I mean, as, it as is some more street juggling also because what I like is about finding things that are very visually pleasing, but mm -hmm. technically nothing. Okay. Because like you know, okay, to say about like a street juggling, for me, I always say that uh, in a street, it's a very good, uh, very good funny things to try. Juggle with balls. If you get juggle three ball, people are gonna be like, oh, he's a juggler. If you juggle like four ball, people are going to be like, ah, oh, yeah, cool. You can juggle quite well. If you juggle five ball, it's going to be, wow, he's juggling many balls. Mm -hmm. If you're juggling like six, seven, eight, twenty, it's like, why well, is juggling many balls? No difference. Like a non-juggler cannot make the difference of the number of balls. When it's past five, it's many. Doesn't matter how many. Okay. Show us some s simple stuff. Okay. So what I really like for me in juggling is like not going for like the active rhythm, like the cascade, where you know it's like you need to always have like throw going on. Like this is like yeah. if I if if I stop, I lose the pattern. 
But me, I love all the pattern which have break um, in between. A very good example is like this pattern. When you're gonna go so straight, so cross. So it's basically you're just doing like cross, straight, cross, catch, straight, catch. So between each row, you have a break when you can kind of like take your time, have a coffee and come back if you caricature it. <laughs> but the good thing is like that from this, you can really think about every throw you can do with one ball, like, you know, the ender's leg on your back, or even like some random, uh, like uh, bouncy stuff. Like, I don't know, I know like a lot of people like this kind of bouncing on your knee. Uh, or also I like all the, when it's just a bit more about like, interacting you know with the ball while it's in the air and then you can bring them very easily in the pattern like for example if i show you like some that's gonna look like it's complicated stuff but it's still exactly the pattern i was showing at the beginning like this straight cross straight cross yeah yeah i know i love this pattern i think it's so, amazing what I love with this pattern, it's a pattern, and which is even more funny, it's a pattern that non-juggler learn faster than the juggler. <laughs> because for the juggler, it confuses the hell out of it. They, no, they, they go to this one. You know, they go to this like uh, four, two, three. And and that's very fun. That's also why I, why I, why I like like teaching based on this kind of pattern, because you're gonna find people who are uh, some people who can juggle a bit and some people who can't juggle at all. And sometime at the end of the, like, you know, sometime during the workshop, the person who already can juggle is going to be more confused than the one who's never juggled, which gives such a feeling of uh, success to the non-juggler people coming to the workshop. Sure, sure, sure. Cool. And so this is real. Like, I, I have few yeah. also, like, I like this pattern as well. Like with multiplex, which is basically like very similar. It's a pattern when you throw two ball, and then you catch one in each end. It's really like the idea that you start with two balls side by side, move your elbow, and boom, do a multiplex yeah. one in each end. But same way like this one, you know, you can go it like throw it under your legs, very easy. Non jugglers, they can get this in like five, ten minutes. Uh, I like you. I like you can go to like this kind of like. I'm trying to do it too fast. You can go to like this kind of like up. And that's it. That look cool and complicated. But a non juggler like in like half an hour, I can teach this to him. So this is what I like. Which like, that's what I try with my juggling. What I mean to say from what I was saying at the beginning is like trying to be like visually entertaining, but technically nothing. Yeah, yeah. So this is, um, you know, what I like about this, and I, I use this this um, this way of teaching as well, is to um, yeah, to not go straight into the cascade because when we go straight into the cascade when we're teaching a group, for example, just we get just a huge spread immediately. You know, where people are suffering with it, and other people start to get it, and this way we bring everybody together, and then afterwards. You know we can give some other input to other people and um but there's this idea of of um i really like this idea of teaching a concept and then everybody is able to go in at his or her own level you know? exactly this is really what i love with this like pattern like uh when you have like break between every throw mm. it is that i see everyone regardless of their level they're gonna find a way to change it because basically what i love uh, is really like first usually in my workshop I start by first like finding like many way of like changing your tr your trick with one ball like you know you got the straight can just have like this kind of like one hand following uh, I love this one or I like like the touch your opposite feet while you throw this one is a funny one it confuses the hell out of people mm -hmm. I like it like if you bring it to this pattern. It's an amazing pattern. Try to give it in one of your workshops, Anthony. You're going to love it. People is like really cool. And, uh, and so yeah, that's a cool thing. That, you, know, you get to this pattern and you try to play with all your throw with one ball, your under the legs, 
catching under the legs. And then, yeah, people just like, depending on their level, they're just going to find a way to mix it. And so the person who is like less comfortable with juggling uh, is going to find like something which is like good for his level. person who is juggling more already is going to find something like even more crazy. And yeah. quite often, every workshop, I have someone who is popping me something which I'm like, Oh, obviously, yeah, no. No, when we're in this, in this um, creative mindset, let's say, and we're learning, we want to learn, and um, we learn from everybody, you know? I learn from everybody. Yeah, totally. I, I learn so much, so much stuff, like, all the time, continuously. I'm blown away. I'm literally like, whoa. <laughs> Non-juggler are absolutely amazing to teach because that's the problem. I feel like as juggler... Especially the juggler, we start to be more and more committed in the juggling community. We start to have like kind of like a box of what is juggling and like what are the common trick. What the non jugglers they don't understand. And it's just like, oh my god. Okay, an example. I loved it. One workshop, I asked someone to make a, a, a throw under the legs, which is like everyone gonna do this more or less. And the girl did me something like, like. She get like so squishing her legs to do this, and I was like, "Wow, never seen about this, bro." Yeah, cool. No, I, I personally, I like to get uh, jugglers into this space um, where they, where they amaze themselves as well. This is um, yeah, but I really like the way well, or something. Like yeah, like lots of jugglers are stuck, they stuck in their ways. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, and juggling is like. That's it. Juggling is not about the object as, I mean, like, that's it. For me, there is a juggling as a training with about the object and about the trick, but there is also the juggling as a performance, which is about the general picture. And, uh, and someone with static throwing like 20 ball is not entertaining. Sorry. Yeah, sure. Um, I just, I want to add this thing here because, um, Sometimes when we get really into street performing, we don't understand people that juggle just for the pure pleasure of it anymore, you know. And there's a lot of pleasure and a lot of um, need as well, you know, to have your own daily practice, whether it be yoga, whether it be gardening, whether it be just juggling, you know, just throwing mm -hmm. objects in there. So, um, you know, if that's your thing, like, cool, you know, Um if you want to expand a little bit more horizontally, because sometimes you get stuck, you know, especially if we're pushing numbers or we're pushing for difficult things all the time, we get a bit stuck. And if we look horizontal, a bit more horizontally, you know, incorporate um, like a bit more like feeling, you know, how's my body feeling in this thing? Um, how's my breath in this thing? And just asking yourself some questions and how, um, how can I make this more interesting for myself? Then we unblock other things as well. Um, we're not just like bah, 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 bah. because when we reach, reach a wall, or we continue, or we quit. You know, a lot of juggling. Yeah, things. yeah, yeah. About like also the all like uh, I like what you say about like breathing and also scanning your body. Is at the moment when you transform your training practice into some kind of meditation and kind of like transcend the. The practice somehow. That sounds yeah. very fish if I say it like this, maybe. No, it's the no, no, it's the quality. The, the the greater the quality of our practice, the greater the quality um afterwards we feel better afterwards, you know. If we have a like a distracted practice yeah. afterwards, we don't feel so satisfied, you know. So Let's see, um, you have anything else you'd like to add to our session, Sinan? I think we've said really a lot of different things here today. Yeah, we've said a lot in a short amount already. Um, no, I don't really know. Like, for me, it's really... Like, yeah, I think I've said it. Like, juggling is really, like, a cool thing. And it's, like, uh, I really think that's, a, that's something which, for me, as a philosophy behind, which is more than just the, the throwing object in your hand, try to catch them. It's really about, like, the... There is, there is really something very strong of the self-development philosophy for me behind juggling. Uh, I've made a video like at the very beginning of my YouTube channel about why I juggle, which, oh. uh, which yeah, was explaining like all these ideas that it's like, uh, what I like also, it's like, yeah, as I say, like, you know, you try something for the first time, everything's gonna fail. And juggling and street shows are the same. Like, you know, first time I did a street show, it was, I sucked. 
what I did, I pick it up, try it again. It's the same with the juggling board. You're going to try juggling and you pick it up and, tr and try again. And it's the same with everything in life. There is nothing you're going to be a genius at the first time. There is nothing you're going to be a virtuous at the same time, at the first time. You're going to have to practice and you're going to try again and you're going to fail and you're going to pick it up and you're going to try again and you're going to fail again and you're going to pick it up and you're going to try again. And the most exciting, uh, most funny things for me in juggling is like, then there is this moment when you've been picked up again and of time that, that you can do it and it becomes easy and you're not dropping anymore. And in juggling, what you do when you start to have, like, you know, when you've been learning like your three ball cascade, what you do, you start learning four balls and you're going to drop again. In some whole, juggling is a research of fail. Because without <laughs> fail, there is no progress. Acceptance of failure, that we learn through failure. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and it's really something I feel like uh, is, is, that's why I see so much value in journey because I feel like when we experience this, implicitly it's something that's going to be shining on other aspects of our life. And this is really something I've been observing for many people in my surrounding too, who have been teaching juggling and, and who say to me, like, yeah, like since I've been learning juggling, some of, m most of them actually never kept juggling. You know, they just juggled for a week of months and then they were like doing something else. But then they've been understanding this idea that, yeah, you gotta fail. Just try again, keep practicing, and be okay with, with failing. Like you know. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you, Sylvan. Brilliant. Yeah, my pleasure. Super cool. So um, next week, we have um, if everything goes well, we should do. We have Marco Paoletti. From oh, Argentina. nice! Marco is coming. Such a cool guy. You can come and watch next week. And um, we will be finishing this Meet the Juggler series at the end of this month. And March, I'm putting together Pearls of Juggling um, Creative Juggling Challenge. And basically, for the whole month of March, there's going to be challenges in, um, in uh, the Pearls of Juggling Facebook group. I should be holding two-hour creative juggling sessions where we just where we go through the, the material we end up improvising and playing going into real really play in creative states and um yeah i'm hoping that um it's going to be really quite collaborative lots of people are going to be offering as well tricks and uh and, and spontaneous sessions and um yeah I, I you know it's like i can't hold workshops and teach now so i'm just going to do this thing you know and it's offered i'm going to offer it in in the spirit of the gift which is um, like doing a street show, really. You know, people can offer what they what they like at the end of it, but uh, that shouldn't be a, a reason to stop it. The bit, the reason, but you have to come committed, though. You know, it's something like I want to do this thing. I'm committed. I'm going to do it. But this, yeah, we will talk nice. about this in the first few days, anyway. You know, but um, I think it's going to be something pretty pretty awesome. So um, choose, choose, say, tune on this page, and and uh, and uh, you will have more information about what's going on. So, um, yeah, the, this uh, um, person here, Stena, she wants to follow you on Instagram. So uh, uh, I'm Sylvain Oulala. That's the name you see right here on the Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. As uh, Anthony was talking earlier, like I've been riding unicycle around Estonia. Uh, I've been riding about a thousand kilometer just with a unicycle, which was pretty insane. Uh, so much fun. And uh, right now I'm uh, fully editing the video and posting this on YouTube. And uh, personally, Ooh. I think it's pretty cool. At least I had Ooh. tons of fun doing the trip, and I really enjoy uh, making the video on YouTube. That's really some things that uh, entertain me a lot. And uh, yeah, I don't know. It's an interesting thing from performing. You have different freedom in video making than in performing, and I really enjoy this different yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. So put Sylvan post in the comments of this video. Uh, your this first video. That you a link to my YouTube and. Uh, and I I have to apologize to our viewers today that um, um, I wasn't able to stream it also onto YouTube today. So it's just been streamed onto Facebook and I will pop it onto YouTube at a, a later date. So we're going to yeah. close this now. So we're going to say goodbye to everybody and we're going to end bye, the broadcast cool. before we get to 40 minutes. So that's a cool one. Very good. So Thank thanks for watching. watching guys. Thanks for watching live. Thanks for watching if you're watching a recording and um, keep in contact. So ciao.